Hello and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Frederik Steinmetz for BlenderDiplom.com and today I'd like to talk about the Solidify modifier. For this I've made this open box and you know that is a non-manifold mesh. And as you know, non-manifold meshes are the scourge of humanity and you should never ever trust them. And we should do everything to avoid them and there is a modifier that does that for us. So I don't want to close the box because that's I want it opens, but I want to solidify the walls. So that means with a solidify modifier, we can increase the wall thickness. And there we go. Now it's a closed mesh because of course the lid is still open, but the walls have a certain thickness. So overall it's a closed mesh. So that's what the solidifier is for. It takes 2D walls, meaning no thickness at all, and makes walls out of them. Okay, so let's get to the options. You can see, especially when I look at this from above and turn the wireframe on, that these are not straight lines. So uh, you would probably expect this to be straight lines. However, if you look at it, they're not. And so let's talk about the thickness and how this works. For this, let's turn on the normals. We can visualize the normals of the vertices. Let's make this 0.3. That's the length of the normal now. And let's also make this minus 0.3. And now you can see the blue line is the vertex normal. It points away exactly 45 degrees because the f this face is 90 degrees in this direction. This is 90 degrees in this direction. So the average of that would be 45 degrees in this direction. And you can see that matches because the visualization of the normal is actually 0.3 and the thickness is minus 0.3 because the thickness gets extruded along the negative normal. So in the opposite direction, the normal is pointing. And now we can see this is why there is not an even thickness. This normal isn't pointing out precisely like this one. And that's because it's averaging out three faces. So this is why with this method you can easily solidify a very regular geometry. But as soon as there is some irregularities like this open lid, it's going to be very hard to get straight lines. So luckily there's an even thickness setting. And if I click that, you can see it's now much more even. So once you click the even thickness, the vertex normals are no longer important for the direction of the solidification. So what else is that? Here we go. Those are the face normals. They point away from each face from the average of the vertex normals of all these. That's the face. So we can see here face normals have the same length. So 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And now we're creating an even thickness because we're moving away from the faces and not the vertices. Now, if we look at this region here, it's still less than perfect because we still get this interpolation problem. But there's another checkbox we can check, and that's the high quality normals. And, and that will even out the thickness even more. So the more complex your mesh, the more likely you are to use the high quality. So of course, the question arises, why isn't it always on high quality? And of course, the answer is because it takes more time to compute. So if you have a model like this, that's really simple, I would always turn on high quality because you're not going to notice the computation time of these six faces. So just leave it on. And as soon as you realize that your computer gets sluggish, or if there's a huge stack of modifiers, then go ahead, experiment with turning it off. So I'm getting ahead of myself, but um, the even thickness and high quality normals directly correspond. And while I'm in the process of getting ahead of myself, let's continue with these options for a second. The flip normals option doesn't seem to do anything. And the reason being uh, in Blender, if you have flat faces, then you won't see the normal direction at all in render. That's because Bl Blender's faces render double sided. So there's no difference between back and front. However, if you shade this smooth, so let's just check this, of course, you would never shade this smooth with such hard edges, but you can just to demonstrate, you can see the flip normal does actually do something. So as soon as you are inside your model, as you are inside the rim that is created by the modifier, like so, 
you might want to go ahead and flip your normals because that will be the more realistic choice. And of course the flip normal it's also flips the normals of your original geometry, not just the newly created one. So to more easily demonstrate the rim, let's head to the materials first. And let's have a look, the material offset is zero. So some people might wish for a drop down here in order to be able to select the material, but this works just as fine as long as you know how it does. So let's have a look at the materials. We now have three materials on the cube, blue, red, and yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and assign the blue one to the original geometry. Now our entire cube is blue. And remember, this is slot number zero, slot number one, slot number two. So let's head back to the solidify settings and have a look at the offset. As soon as I increase the offset, you can see this gets red. So what this effectively does is take the material slot of the main material and add one. So we'd be at the red material slot, which is exactly what we're seeing here. And same for the rim. If we add one, the rim gets red and one more, it gets yellow. And this even works in negative direction. If we go to the material settings again, and let's assign the yellow one to the cube, we can go back and use negative values. And we're going down from the list. So this is going up to this empty slot, and the other one is going towards the yellow slot. But that's confusing. So I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to set this back to two. So now we have three different colors on our mesh. Before we only had one and that is because the solidify modifier creates two parts of geometry. One is the rim and one is the shell. So now that we have the rim properly visualized, it's much easier to see what these options do. If I uncheck fill, then the rim is gone. And you can see, of course, all the yellow color is gone and I can look through this. And if I do check the rim fill, I have the option to only project the rim that leaves the original geometry and the rim. Not sure why you would use that, but I'm sure there's somebody who finds this useful. So let's get back to the offset, which is pretty much the only option we haven't discussed in this menu. If I put this to 0 0.3, then we're extruding inside because we're going in the opposite direction of the normals. And if I use the offset, I put it to one, then you can see we're doing exactly the opposite. If I go back into edit mode, now the original geometry is on the inside. And if I use minus one, then the original geometry is on the outside, meaning it gets in extruded in. So if you are at minus one, that does exactly the same thing as putting a minus in front of here. And at plus one, of course, same thing. The offset is only interesting when we get to values between those two. So let's set this to zero and you can see it does a, have a drastic effect, even though zero might not be what you expect. Now the original geometry is now exactly in between the outer wall and the inner wall. So now if I increase this th thickness, you can see it's going in both directions. Whereas if I put the offset here, it's only going out. So the offset is basically very nice value to uh, fine tune where the thickness ends without going into the original geometry. All right, that's that. And let's head over to the edge data. We have four sliders here. And they all do nothing, which of course, is simply due to the fact that the crease, whenever you read crease, it always refers to a subdivision surface modifier, or in some rare cases to a multi resolution modifier. So before we put any a subdivision surface modifier on there, the crease is not going to do a thing. And I think it's best to demonstrate this on a half sphere. So I added an icosphere and cut it in half. And of course, again, we need the solidify modifier and increase the thickness. Now we have the walls and just because it's easier to see, let's offset these. So we're back at the original setting. So as I said, edge data doesn't do a thing until we have a subdivision surface modifier. And by pressing control two, that's a handy shortcut to add one. Now you can see, of course, the icosphere gets smoothed out a lot. Now if I increase 
the inner, you can see what's happening. You can see that the inner corner, which is here, gets sharpened. So the crease is telling the subdivision surface modifier, or I should better say the catmull clark algorithm, that these edges should be very sharp. And we actually have control over this right here in the item settings. So the mean crease can be increased, and there we go. That's doing the exact same thing on the outside as this does the inside. But this is a little tedious, so there's a slider that does exactly that for us, which is the outer crease. So if we do put the outer and the inner crease to one, we have flattened out this part of the object. So let's turn down these and turn up the rim, because the rim does something weird looking because it kind of looks like it's making the object more jagged so first time I tried this it looked to me like um, it's creasing along this line but if I turn down these two and apply the modifier we can see quite neatly what these do the rim crease is exactly those lines along the rim so those would be the outer ones those would be the inner ones and those would be the creases along the rim. In order to demonstrate the bevel option, I brought back the box because beveling a half sphere doesn't make too much sense. So let's add the bevel modifier because as you probably already guessed, the bevel only influences the next modifier as well. So right now still doesn't do a thing. And that is because the limitation method is ankle and it doesn't care about the weight. And this value only affects the weight. So if we put this to weight and now it's gone. And that's because the bevel convex is zero. And also we have not assigned any manual bevel weight to any of the edges. So let's do that now. I have the bottom face selected. So those are the four edges. And I can increase the mean bevel weight to 0 0.5. I don't want to go to one because the resulting value is clamped between zero and one. And once we go to one, there is no effect that can be added to that. Now let's have a look at what this did. It also beveled the inside. And remember, the outside is our original geometry right now. So the inside are the created faces. And by default, the crease that I assign to the faces manually gets transferred to the generated faces. And now if I increase this, you can see that all the edges are being beveled, even though the ones that have a weight of zero manually assigned. And let's have a look at what this does to the outside. As long as I stay in the positive range of this slider, it doesn't do a thing, which is a little odd to me because I would expect this to add up to the 0 0.5 we have here, but it does not. As soon as I get to the negative value though, it subtracts. So now we're at minus 0 0.5, which negates the effect of this edge entirely. So let's have a look at what this does to the inside. For some other odd reason, it does not negate the inside effect of this. So the bevel option gives us the option to bevel the inside independent of the outside. But as soon as we use a manual bevel on the outside, we don't have as much control over the inside anymore. So yeah, make of this what you wish. And you can see that uh, if I change the direction. Now the newly created faces are on the inside. And you can still the bevel still affects the inside. And that's the same for all of these. This says crease inner and not crease new. But the material offset, for example, says it offsets the material index of the generated faces, which is not correct. Because the generated faces are the inside and they should be red. Because red is the first one. But the inside is blue. And if I change this, the thickness here, you can see the inside stays blue and the outside stays red, even though now the outside is the newly created faces. So that's a little misleading, but maybe it's even uh, easier to manipulate. Depending on where you're com coming from, just remember that these are the outside faces and not the newly created ones. So let's remove the bevel modifier because we're talking about solidify today. And I'm going to skip the thickness clamp because for this box it doesn't do anything useful. Now we're going to check the output vertex groups. There is none, so this modifier can't generate a group, but it is able to fill an existing group. So if I go to the vertex groups and I create two of them, 
call one outside and one inside. Go back to the modifier and now I can drop these. Shell is outside to me and rim is inside. And now again, nothing happens. But if I go to weight paint, you can see that this actually worked. I don't have any vertices assigned to the groups, as you can see if I turn this off. But once I turn it on, this fills the group. So right now we're looking at the inside, which we assigned to the rim. So of course the rim is red. And if we select the outside, you can see only the outside faces are red. The inside is not touched. And again, this option adds to the existing data. So let's go with the inside, which is our rim and just assign all vertices of the box with a weight of 0 0.5. So I assign these and now you can see this turn green, which is 0 0.5. 0 is black, so let's assign 0 and check again. Now the downside is black and the middle is 0 0.5 because we have the gradient between 1, which got assigned to the rim by the modifier, down to 0, which is the default value. Now let's have a look at what this can actually be used for because it's actually very useful. If I use the outside now, we can, for example, add another modifier. Let's go for a wave for now. And if we limit the wave to a vertex group, let's take the rim, which would be inside. So let's go out of weight paint mode and add a second modifier, a deform modifier. Let's go with a wave. And if I scrub through the timeline, you can see the entire box wiggling. But if I limit the wave modifier to the vertex group, I'm going to go with the inside, which is the rim. You can see now only the rim is wiggling. And of course, I can do the same thing for the outside. And now only the outside is doing the wave thing. The inside is not affected. So there's only two options left, which is complex and the thickness clamp. And I'd like to actually split this tutorial and talk about these two options in the next one. So until then, thank you for watching. If you think you've learned something from this video, please go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to see more videos of this kind, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel. And if you're interested in cycles whatsoever, please consider buying our book. It contains all the information about every node, as well as a lot of tips about performance, denoising, and so on.